This video is part three of a series. The first two showed what happens when a container of water is spun around a vertical axis through its center and gave a conceptual explanation for why the surface of the water takes on a parabolic shape with a minimum of math. This video will show a mathematical proof that that is the case. If you haven't seen the other videos, you may want to. This sketch shows a side view of the water, just like in the video. The black dot labeled M represents a small mass of water on the curved surface. The container is rotating around the y-axis. We hypothesize that the surface is a parabola, but before we can prove that, we need to review what a parabola is. The usual definition given in geometry class is that a parabola is the set of points that are equidistant between a line, called the directrix, and a point, called the focus. Those two blue lines connecting M to the focus and to the directrix are the same length, and that is true no matter where M is on the curved parabola. The equation of a parabola is a quadratic equation of the form y equals ax squared plus b, where a and b are constants. Taking the derivative of this, we find dy dx equals 2ax. What this means is that the slope of the line is proportional to the distance from the y-axis, and in fact we can take that fact as another definition of a parabola. Double x and you'll double the slope. Notice that the line gets steeper and steeper, but will never be purely vertical. A so-called tangent line is a line that just touches a curved line at a single point. If we draw a line tangent to the parabola through m, that line will make an angle, call it theta, with the x-axis. Here's a right triangle formed by the tangent line and the x-axis. Its slope, its rise over run, is delta y over delta x, is the side opposite theta divided by the side adjacent to theta. That's why the same word, tangent, is used for the trig function opposite over adjacent, and as the name of a line that just kisses a curved line at a single point. Now let's talk about some physics. There are two forces acting on M. It's being pulled downward by gravity. This weight, F sub G, equals M times little g. Little g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram on Earth. There's also the normal force, just like if M were a block sitting on a ramp. Normal means perpendicular, perpendicular to the surface. Because the surface is angled up at an angle theta, the normal force is pushing both upwards and inwards. The inwards force, F sub n x, which is F sub n sine theta, is the centripetal force that makes m go in a horizontal circle. Therefore, it must equal mv squared over r. The upwards force, F sub n y, must be holding the mass m up against gravity. So, F sub n cosine theta must equal mg. Dividing the x equation by the y equation allows us to get rid of f sub n, yielding tangent theta equals v squared over gx. But the speed v is equal to the circumference over t, the rotation period. That's just distance divided by time for circular motion. Substituting that in for v tells us that tangent theta equals 4 pi squared over gt squared times x. 4 pi squared over gt squared is a constant, and tangent theta is the slope of the surface. So what this equation is saying is that the slope is proportional to the distance from the, from the axis. And that was a defining property of a parabola. We have proven that the water surface takes the shape of a parabola. Having achieved our main goal, let's now find the equation for the parabola. We already know it has the form y equals ax squared plus b, but we want to find out what a and b are. Let's look at a first. We already know that the slope dy dx is 2ax, so 4 pi squared over gt squared equals 2a, and therefore a equals 2 pi squared over gt squared. Now we know that y equals 2 pi squared over gt squared x squared plus b. Now let's turn and try to find out what b is. b is the y-intercept of the parabola. In other words, at x equals 0, the parabola crosses the y-axis at y equals b. 
and that is going to depend not only on how fast the container is spinning, but also on how much water is in the container. Let's say that x equals negative L and x equals positive L are the left and right sides of the container. The total amount of fluid, the volume, can be thought of as the area under the curve. For this experiment, the water level was set so that it was at y equals zero when the container was stationary. So the volume was zero. That's a little strange to say, since there is clearly water inside that container. But if the water level were below the x-axis, we would say the total volume was negative. It's just a math thing. That said, the area under the curve, the integral, must equal zero. So AL cubed over 3 plus BL equals zero. And therefore B must equal negative AL cubed over 3 or negative 2 pi squared L squared over 3 G T squared. This equation is valid with two caveats. One, the horizontal surface of the water was at y equals zero when stationary, as already said. And two, when spinning, the water level does not reach the top edge of the container. If that happens, you have to redo the integral to take that into account. It's a couple pages of math, not much harder than what we've already done here but is left as an exercise for you. Let's check that our equation works. Here's a clip of the experiment taken with a high-speed camera shooting 300 frames per second. By carefully counting frames, it turns out that the rotation period here is 0 0.95 seconds. Here's a spreadsheet that calculates and plots the surface profile given input parameters such as the period in seconds, little g, the strength of gravity in centimeters per second squared, and L, the width of the tank on either side of the axis. And it calculates the value of A and B. You can see the formula for A is 2 pi squared over GT squared. B is negative AL squared over 3. And then for a variety of different x's in centimeters, it calculates the corresponding y-coordinate of the surface. And if I change the period, instead of one second, if I were to make it 0.75 seconds, it updates the profile. 0.6 seconds updates the profile. I can't go much faster than that because then the water surface is going to hit the top of the tank and the equation is no longer valid then. But Let's go ahead and put in 0.95 seconds, which is the period as determined in the video clip used here. And now let's go ahead and look at that profile in its entirety. There it is. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut and paste this into the video and overlay it on top and we'll see how well it matches. Hey, that's pretty good. Apparently this physics stuff really works. Anyway, this has been a long video. Thanks for sticking with it.